Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about hair. I am not an expert in hair by any means. Obviously makeup is like my number one passion. So I'm not really gonna be sharing with you my hair care routine or anything just because it's so boring. Like I literally just wash it. I really don't do anything to it other than wash it and then maybe spray some hair lightener in it. But in terms of taking care of it, washing it is pretty much the only thing that I do. But I do wanna share with you some hair tips, if you will, that I've kind of learned along the way. Um, I don't wash my hair every single day and it kind of took me a while to get used to that just because when I was growing up, I was a swimmer so I had to kind of wash my hair every day after practice because of chlorine. But ever since I stopped swimming, I kind of trained my hair to not need to be washed every single day. We're gonna go ahead and get into it, but before, we do. Don't forget to please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you know when I post, typically Wednesdays and Saturdays. But yeah, let's go ahead and get on into it. All right, so as I just mentioned, the first thing I want to say is I believe in not washing your hair every single day. And I know this is super hard, especially when you first start out. Um, my hair is the kind of hair that gets really oily really, really fast. I'll wash my hair every other day typically. Like that's kind of like my go-to. Um, and dry shampoo is something that I really want to kind of hammer home here. Sometimes it works better for me with certain products, etc. but I like to dry shampoo my hair before I go to bed. And that is because I think it really helps soak up the oils as you're sleeping so that when you wake up, you're in a rush to go somewhere. You don't need to worry about spraying that shampoo all over your head, have that white cast. I think it's a lot more effective in my experience. And I don't really necessarily wanna recommend the shampoo shampoo, the dry shampoo that I'm using now. Um, it is by one of my favorite hair care brands, Hask, which is also my current shampoo and conditioner. You can find Hask at Ulta, I think at the drugstore. It's one of the more affordable brands, but they are pretty natural. They're cruelty free and I really, really love their products, but that dry shampoo just does not soak up my oils. But yeah, I want to say first, try to wash your hair every other day not every day because it'll dry out your hair if you do wash it every day it'll strip it of its natural oils and then ironically it will actually cause your head to produce more oils it's kind of like the same situation with oily skin like myself kind of like a big grease ball all the time if you have oily skin and you don't moisturize your skin it will actually make you produce more oils which is obviously counterproductive, right? So you always wanna make sure you go in with a moisturizer or an oil after you wash your face, no exceptions. All right, and then I wanna talk about a couple ways I try to keep my oils at bay on my head. As I've said, I get pretty oily. So when I'm showering and I condition my hair, I only like to focus my conditioner from basically my ear down so I don't focus it at my top at all like I'll shampoo I'll really scrub my scalp just because the purpose of shampoo is to really clarify your scalp so I really believe in kind of like working your fingers all in there but in terms of conditioner because it is more slippy because it's more nourishing and it's meant to really lock in moisture and your hair's natural oils especially if you have long hair or longer hair medium to long hair um, I really recommend concentrating your conditioner from like here down just because the ends are actually where it really, really matters just because, you know, you get split ends. Conditioner can really help with anti-breakage and your split ends. So definitely try to concentrate it more at the bottom towards your ends, but also if you wanna just kind of run th your fingers through your hair to detangle your hair, or if you have a brush, like the wet brush, I actually don't use this in the shower, I use this afterwards, but if you use a brush in the shower, I recommend the wet brush just because it does a really, really good job at detangling hair in the shower. Definitely rub your conditioner and work it through the bottom part of your hair so it doesn't get all oily up here. I find that it really makes a really big difference in terms of how oily I get. Another thing if you want to really nourish your ends is go in with an oil. If my hair is feeling extra brittle and dry, especially on the second day where I haven't washed my hair, I'll go in with an oil and really concentrate it at the ends. We just kind of got past our winter months in Vegas where it was really, really dry, I mean it's always dry here, but it was especially staticky, especially dry, and oils really helped save my hair, especially just concentrating at the ends. So I would use the Nourishing Coconut Milk Anti-Breakage Serum from OGX Organics. I don't know if this brand is cruelty free or not. I think I mentioned in a past video that it no longer was, but I've looked into their statement online saying that they don't 
test. They don't have suppliers to test on their behalf, so I'm really not sure. Please leave me a comment down below if you know what the true status of OGX is, just because I really like their products and it would be a shame if they weren't cruelty free anymore. But anyway, I bought this a long time ago and I really like this. It has a nice scent. I don't find that it's the most hydrating, but in terms of anti-breakage, I find that it really does a good job. And if you don't wanna to go to the drugstore, this will be your best friend. This is 100% pure organic argan oil from Trader Joe's. I've mentioned this before. This is such a staple. Comes in a little bottle like this. First of all, the packaging is really pretty. It's only $7. It's pure. It's organic. It's amazing. You can use it on your face, which is what I do sometimes as a moisturizer. And it has a little dropper that you can really just kind of like drop onto your fingers like this, your hands, and then take it and really just kind of work it through the ends and this also helps with anti-breakage and nourishes your hair truly so love this stuff cannot recommend this enough for your hair for your nails for your skin really really good so if you've noticed that despite all of these things your hair is still feeling really really dry and staticky especially on the second day something that i have learned is to take one of these guys this my friends is one of my favorite hair hacks ever this is a dryer sheet um yes that's right it's one of those things that you pop into your dryer to prevent frizziness within your clothes the same way it's anti-static for your clothes it's anti-static for your hair all i do with this if i've noticed that i'm getting a lot of flyaways as i'm brushing my hair um it's actually a little bit warmer these days so i'm not getting as much but still i'll notice some here and then i'll take this dryer sheet and i'll just rub it through my hair like so all up in my hair and you don't have to worry about this making your scalp oily or whatever it's not it's purely just going to take away the flyaways and tame the frizz when it's really really dry so I just kind of just brush it all through my hair as if I'm kind of combing my hair with it and I find that it really makes such a big difference this is something that's not going to really have any lasting power the anti-frizz isn't necessarily going to stay just from rubbing this through your head once but I find that since these are so portable and so easy to find whenever i'm brushing my hair and i notice that they're static i'll just pull one out and i'll just or find one around my house in one of my drawers with my clothes or even like a brand new one and just rub it all throughout my hair and it really does help eliminate the static buildup and flyaways in the frizz so really good stuff one of my favorite hair hacks ever all right, and now I wanna talk about blow drying your hair. I am not someone who blow dries my hair every single day. In fact, I hardly ever blow dry my hair just because I don't necessarily feel like I need to. I mean, as I said, my hair care routine is pretty simple and straightforward, but I do wanna say that when you do blow dry your hair, don't point like the nose of the hair dryer directly onto your scalp like this, just because it'll flatten your hair and you won't get enough volume. Like try kind of floofing your hair around um, don't blow it against the shaft, but also make sure that you're not blow drying your hair so it's like flat like a pancake. And on that note, I mentioned my wet brush and I do want to say that as I'm brushing my hair, it's really important to not pull your hair from your scalp to your ends when you notice a knot. Like really try to hold your hair and brush it like this just because you will minimize damage that way otherwise you can really just pull out a huge chunk of your hair and nobody wants that i only just started recently using this to brush my hair when it was damp just because i started using sun and again which is a hair lightener that i just spray liberally through my hair and i wanted a brush to really help distribute the product so i decided to go with this what i've noticed is that when i brush my hair with this when it's damp is that the way you brush your hair when it's wet is the kind of shape and form that it will take when it's dry if that makes sense so for example if you know i'm done spraying my sun in and i brush my hair like this it's going to mold to my face like this when it's dry and i'm gonna have absolutely no volume not that my hair has the most volume anyway just because it's very straight and you know it's just not the most voluminous hair ever i just want to say that if you're brushing your hair when it's wet try to brush it away from your face if that's the kind of look you're going for if you don't want your hair to just kind of like frame your face so tightly and that brings me to my last kind of hair tip when it comes to off days aka days that i don't shampoo my hair i've already mentioned dry shampoo but i want to say that when i haven't washed my hair i will nine times out of ten put it into a ponytail and when I put it into a ponytail, I have these chronic baby hairs that I'm sure you guys have noticed in videos before that will always just settle right here. And 
your hair actually can attract a lot of grease and oil and dirt and cause breakouts on your forehead which is strange but it actually very much happens and that's how I actually get a lot of forehead acne appears because of my second day hair or my dirty hair that's kind of just falling in my face when I'm not realizing it so what I highly recommend is not only pulling your hair back but getting one of these guys this is a little barrette or you can get a bobby pin whatever floats your boat and when you're either out in the day or you're even when you're sleeping at night I recommend pinning back your hairs like this so that they're not falling in your face, especially when you're sleeping. But this is something that I find to be so easy. I just kind of do one pin here, one pin here, keeps these baby hairs out of my face. And I find that my acne is greatly, greatly reduced with me doing this. So that's just kind of like a little tip for you guys if you do have baby hairs like me. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video of some quick little hair tips and hacks I wanted to share with you. Again, I am not a hair expert by any means, but these are just some tips that I have found to really work for me. I have straight, really thick hair. Hopefully these help you out. But yeah, I think that's it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day wherever you are. Please give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.